Hey fellow carnivores and those of you just getting started on the diet, Carnivore Mark here today. I want to talk to you today about getting started on the carnivore diet. If you've already gotten started or you're just at the beginning stages, um, you know, maybe you can relate with this. I want to help guide you through some areas where um, I you know, maybe um, didn't see so much of you know, earlier on when I started last year. Maybe there's some more you know, content out there um, that covers these topics, but I wanted to bring it all into one video so I could talk about all of the pitfalls and the things that I struggled with when I started carnivore um, versus you know, the things that I know now. So I want to try to help you through all those things to make sure that you have the most chance at success at the carnivore diet. Now, the good news is that the struggles of the carnivore diet only really happen within the, really, the first month, month and a half. Now, everybody is a little bit different. Um, I'm also going to say this, a disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. Um, I can't give you medical advice. I can just tell you what's worked for me and what I've seen works generally in the community at large, in the carnivore uh, dieting community. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So let's talk about what is carnivore. So carnivore comes from two words in the Latin, carne and vore. So that's meat, uh, meat to eat. So we're eating meat, carnivore. So um, you might have a lot of questions. You're thinking about different foods and you're like, okay, is this carnivore? Well, is it meat? No. Is it from an animal? No. Then it's not carnivore. So, sorry to break it to you, not carnivore. So, carnivore is basically you're eating meat, any kind of meat. It's technically carnivore. Think about a wolf or bear, a lion, a tiger, you know, any of these creatures that will go after meat. What are they eating? That's carnivore. All right, so we're avoiding sugar. We're not having sugar. We're not having plants. We're not having processed foods. And when you think about it, everything comes down to plants, right? Every processed food is made up from different plants. Whole wheat bread, what is that? Plants. Um, sugar, plants, right? Uh, all these things are made from plants. So we just avoid plants. So a carnivore diet, what can you have? All those animals. Well, what about fish? Yes, absolutely. What about birds? Yes, absolutely. Chicken, turkey, all those sorts of things. All good. Um, now, what about, what are the best kinds of meats to have? Well, basically you want to keep that to I mean, eat whatever you want to eat, but I'm going to tell you what's worked best for me is the ruminant animals because they are the most nutrient dense. So we're looking at, you know, things with, you know, basically multi-chamber stomachs like, you know, cows and you know, goats, lamb, you know, those sorts of things. Um, some people, you know, do okay with pigs and that sort of thing. I don't really do that, you know, pigs and pork um, because they, they don't process everything the same way. Now, what's nice is that, you know, are, say, a cow, for example. Yeah, it eats the grass, but then by the time it cycles back and forth between the various chambers of the stomachs, it, or the stomach, it, it turns into, and it just goes into their body and becomes really, really great nutrition. Whereas animals that don't have that filtration system, um, sure, you'll get nutrition out of it, but it's definitely not as much. All right, so how about uh, grain-fed versus grass-fed meat? What do you want to do? Well, if you don't have, I mean, autoimmune conditions, I really don't have an autoimmune condition. Um, Dr. Hemberry has even stated that you can do this on hot dogs and hamburgers, you know, minus the buns, minus the lettuce and that kind of thing. But, you know, basically to say that any meat is okay as long as it's meat, um, as, you know, as long as it's you know, decent quality meat. So. But uh, what I have seen in the community as I've been looking through is that people with autoimmune conditions have tended to have a better time and an easier time reversing those autoimmune conditions on grass-fed versus grain-fed meat. Uh, me, I, I haven't really experienced that, so I get to go to the store and buy the cheaper cuts. Um, so how about when I look at the meat, you know, what do I see? Do you see a bunch of marbling? The more marbling, the better because you want the fattier cuts of meat. Why? Because the fat is the key to your health, right? That is the key to your health, and it's also the key to losing fat. 
So here's a motto that I, I, I go by. I actually don't know if I picked this up somewhere or if I just kind of like made it up because of just the things that I've learned. Uh, but basically, I live by this. You eat meat. No, let me reverse that. Eat fat to lose fat. Eat muscle to gain muscle. And it's like really oversimplified, but eat fat to lose fat, eat muscle to gain muscle. You know what? In about six and a half months time, I lost uh, 60 pounds. You know, so that was all stuff that was pulling down on my spine, making me hurt more and more and more every single day, making it hard for me to walk around because of my spinal damage, my spinal injury that I had. So it was just gravity, just pulling down on that, making it really, really hard, quite frankly, to live. I was on uh, multiple medications daily that I was taking um, just to manage the symptoms of that, let alone the other health conditions that I was dealing with. And then when I found, well, what I found was that the more fat that I ate, not only did I lose fat, but the more fat that I ate, the more those other conditions improved as well to the point where I'm no longer taking any of those medications. All gone. Not even a part of you know, what I do. I was taking those medications plus multivitamins and don't have to do that anymore. So, um, yeah, super, super important. Work on the fat, work on the meat, get rid of all the vegetables. That's basically what carnivore is. Uh, it differs from all the other diets because of this as well. You get to eat as much as you want. Matter of fact, one of the best points of advice that I've ever seen, and it's not in a lot of videos, but you'll find like here and there, and I want to make sure it's included in this, this fact is that when you're getting started and even throughout the course of your eating, eat more than you think you need to eat. Because it's very easy to get full on eating carnivore and not eat enough. See, what happens when you don't eat enough is a couple of things. Number one is uh, you'll get hungry again later and then you have to worry about, okay, so now we've got to go cook more meat or something like that. But the other thing that can happen is your body's not getting all the nutrition that it can really use for that day. I mean, think about before we had all the luxuries of having a store on every corner, we had to hunt for our food, right? So we had to go out, we had to hunt, we had to you know, run after an animal. That could take days to track a, uh, you know, an animal creature and then takes more energy on top of that. You, you kill it, you feast for multiple days, and then you don't have food again for a few days while you go on, on the, next hunt, hunt, the next hunt, okay? So, um, or, you know, we're... we're meant to be able to go for periods of time, you know, without eating and to be able to concentrate and focus on having these foods uh, in a short period of time. So definitely eat more than you think you need to. Uh, it's going to give your body all the right nutrition that it needs. It's going to nutrient pack you. So then this way you can go for longer periods of time without eating. You're going to wind up doing this intermittent fasting that I'm sure you've heard of, or maybe you've done, or maybe you do, uh, but you're going to do it accidentally now. It's like, oh, wait, I haven't eaten since yesterday. I can't tell you how often that happens. It happens all the time. Uh, you know, I eat dinner and then the next day, like a dinner time rolls around. I'm like, oh yeah, I guess I'm, I'm starting to get a little hungry again. And I didn't eat the rest of the day. I used to be hyperglycemic as well. I used to not be able to go more than a couple hours without getting lightheaded, woozy, tunnel vision, all those sorts of things. That is a thing of the past now that my body's operating on fat uh, instead of you know sugar and, and glucose. So um, what can you eat? Anything that's meat. Think of the apex predators. What are they eating? You know, they're eating what? Um, yeah, sure, the, the cows, the beef, right? Uh, they're eating the fowl of the air, the fish of the sea. <laughs> Basically, if it has meat in it, you can eat it. Um, I like the, uh, the acronym that's popular in the community, which is beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. I'm not sure who came up with that. It might've been Dr. Baker. Beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Um, I really don't do bacon you know, much personally. That, pigs don't do a lot for me. Um, I'll eat chicken, but that's not like my primary go-to because I don't feel as uh, good after I eat that, even though I, I do feel good but not as good as, say, when I eat beef. Now, why is that? Because we have, um, say, the cows and uh, goats and lambs, they have the multi-chambered stomach. So the ruminant animals, you know, they're out there eating the grass for us, so we don't have to, hence no veggies, because they're able to process all that, get it into their own systems, have it go back and forth in multiple chambers of their stomachs, and then, you know, process that into 
nutrition into their muscle groups and their fat. So then when we consume that, uh, that is the most nutrient dense food that is available. And you can actually go on Google and find nutrition in meat and just be blown away at all the, the uh, uh, vegetables, minerals, not vegetables, all the uh, vitamins and minerals uh, that are found in meat. Uh, so it's, it's pretty wild how that works. So uh, again, we want to make sure that we have plenty of fat along with the meat, right? So we want to make sure that we are eating in a way that is completely satiating us. It has a bunch of fat in it because fat is where the um, nutrition is. That's what's going to help get all that nutrition shuttled around in your system. The meat is good because that is protein. Your, your, your body needs protein to build, to grow. So we're going to go ahead and you know, rebuild our muscles and tissues and all those sorts of things using the protein. But we're going to, you know, all those vitamins and minerals and all those sorts of things are in the fat. So make sure that you're eating a lot of fat. If you're eating a lean cut of meat, um, then you want to try to stick with um, or just keep with uh, that meal, butter. You know, keep butter on the side. Um, I'm probably going through anywhere from a quarter stick of butter a day to a whole stick of butter or sometimes even more, depending on the kinds of cuts of meat that I eat. Um, I'm generally eating, I guess, a pound and a half to two pounds of meat a day. And some days I'm just insatiable. I'll eat about three pounds of meat and then I'll go for like a day and a half, you know, without eating because I'm just not hungry. So that said, that's the cool, weird thing about the diet. Now, how are you going to make it? on this diet? That's the big question you should be asking yourself. And that is with mental preparation. Because without properly preparing your mind, you're not going to be successful on this diet. Why? Because you have too many social pressures around you, environmental pressures, right? The social pressure, you, know, you go to a, a cookout, barbecue, a function, um, church event, um, work event, you know, Coworkers' birthday party, I don't know, any number of things, number of things that you can be invited to. Um, you're invited, your friends, you know, take it to a bowling alley, you know, all these sorts of things. You need to be able to have a strong enough reason in your mind for doing this that you're not going to cave in to the pressure of saying, okay, yeah, I'll have the pizza slice this time. Because then you're just, you're undoing everything that, that you did. Now, here's the thing that previous bit of advice that I gave you, eat more than you think you need to eat, that is going to save you from all these social pressures. Because if you eat more than you think you need to eat, especially before you go to one of these events, then you're not going to be hungry or tempted to go ahead and have that piece of cake or that slice of pizza or whatever it is. You'll be like, no, hey, thank you. I, I ate before I came. So I'll definitely appreciate it. Thanks. You, know, you, you, someone else can have that slice, you know, whatever it is. So social pressure, that's the way to stay away from that. Um, now, the other cool thing, now, when I got started uh, a little over a year ago, you know, carnivore was like almost taboo. Keto is just kind of becoming a norm. So people can understand keto. So you can say, hey, look, I'm doing like a little bit more of a condensed version of keto right now. And you know, people would understand. Um, so, you know, you can kind of get around the social pressures that way. Uh, cravings and temptations, like I said, you eat more than enough. And then you don't have to deal with any cravings or temptation. Now, ultimately, you might face some day-to-day -day, uh, cravings and temptation, and then that could be your enemy as well. But again, if you're eating more than you need to on your regular meal times or you know, whatever it is that you eat, then those cravings are going to be totally gone in like I'd say like a month, month and a half on average is. Uh, I mean, that's when it, it was for me. It seems to be almost common throughout the community. After about a month and a half, no more cravings. Cravings gone. Um, another thing that is your enemy is the clock. All right. You're programmed to eat at breakfast, eat at lunch, eat at dinner, eat several snacks in between. First off, there is no way that you can eat that often on a carnivore diet. It's just, it's impossible. You'll be way too full. Uh, to be able to even do that. But the other side of things is, you know, if you ate a little bit, like just enough to get you from a breakfast time to a lunch time, 
you're going to be starving. Then anything you pass by is going to be a temptation. But if you eat more than enough, then you can pass by all the restaurants in the world, all the fast food places in the world, and you're not going to be tempted to go in and get the wrong thing. So eat more than enough, and then the clock is no longer your enemy. Um, you also need to have this reason why you're doing this in mind because there's something that's called oxalate dumping. And that's, that's the transition. Now, it doesn't happen to everybody, but it happens to a lot of folks in the community. So let me tell you, you know, what that is. First off, um, if you do a slow approach, some people do that. That's not me. I like to go all or nothing and whatever I do. Uh, but if you go the slow approach, you know, step up your beef intake, your meat, I should say. I, I, just, I think about beef because that's 90% of what I eat. I eat beef and eggs most of the time. Um, so bring up your meat intake, bring down your carbs a bit by bit, day after day after day. Then it's not going to be as much, I think, of an issue from what I've heard. Uh, but I went all or nothing. So all or nothing means that I stopped all plant products, including sugar, and I just went all meat right away with fats. And what oxalate dumping is, it's basically, um, to keep this PG, I will say that's uh, brown water in the toilet constantly for about a week and a half to two weeks uh, on average that I've seen. So, uh, not that I've seen, but that I've seen in the community, you know, being reported. So, oxalate dumping, what exactly is that? Well, from all the plants that we've eaten and consumed, the oxalates are these little tiny crystals and they stay with us. They stay, they line up, you know, our bodies and everything like that and inside of our blood vessels. So, they're coming from the plants between the, the oxalates, the, the phytotoxins, the anti-nutrients, the carcinogens, that's all inside, it's all coming from the plants. So when, our, when we stop eating the plants, then our body's happy. It's like, wow, okay, I'm, not, I'm no longer getting packed with all this stuff, so now we can let it go. So it lets it go, right? So if you jump right in, you want to have a strong enough reason to kind of endure that transitional period while you know, the oxalate dumping is occurring. And then once it's done, let me tell you, it's like night and day. You will never have felt better in your life. Um, I got uh, such an energy boost. I got such a stamina boost. My endurance, my strength went up. My back pain um, had virtually disappeared. Um, you know, just my other health issues, I was dealing with intestinal um, issues that the doctors were having trouble diagnosing. That was basically had me bedridden for a time. Um, that went away as well. I was able to run with my kids. That all happened right after the oxalate dumping. So it's very, very awesome, you know, what happens on this diet. But you need to have a reason why you're doing it. So why are you jumping on carnivore? Are you doing it to lose weight? Is your reason for losing weight strong enough to take you through social pressures, craving sensations, through the clock and through the side effects? If it is, awesome. You're going to be successful. If it's not, try to come up with a reason that's going to be stronger than your cravings. And then you'll be successful. All right, so let's talk about some common mistakes on this diet. So um, what are some common mistakes? I say cooking too long. You can actually overcook nutrients to the point where they're no longer even useful uh, to you. So don't cook things too long. You know, I basically, I, at this point, I use that meat thermometer constantly, digital meat thermometer. Um, so let's say the, um, I do beef most of the time. So I set, you know, that timer for, uh, 145 degrees Fahrenheit in the U.S. So I pop the thing in the meat. All right, I cook it. I just let it, you know, go cook low and slow until it reaches an internal temperature of 145 degrees. Then, as soon as it does, I pull that meat thermometer out. I uh, let it rest for you know maybe 20 minutes or so, and then I start you know cooking into it. Now that will get me to about a a rare to a medium rare you know piece of beef. And you might be thinking, well, I don't know about all that, all that red, all that blood. Well, the truth is, that's not really blood that's there. It's something that's called myoglobin. Myoglobin is one of the most nutri uh, nutritious uh, parts of or aspects to eating red meat is that myoglobin. It's super, super healthy, and it makes me feel absolutely amazing. I used to love well done 
uh, meat, but I, I just, I don't anymore. Um, I just, I don't get the nutrition I need. I don't get the feeling I need out of it. Uh, so I always feel my best when that myoglobin is taking care of me. All right. Uh, another common mistake that people make is not eating enough fat. You have to make sure that you have plenty of fat with the diet. Because again, the protein is going to help rebuild your cells, going to help re rebuild, uh, I should say, your, your muscle tissues and fibers and, 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 you know, other tissues and things like that. But it's the fat, it's the cholesterol. Did you know that almost every single cell in your body is made of mostly cholesterol, including your brain? So we need to feed that as much as possible. And did you know that only about 25% of the cholesterol that is in your body is from the dietary form. Otherwise, your body just makes it. So if you don't eat any cholesterol, your body tries to make and tries to cobble together cholesterol in order to pro um, properly feed your body. Uh, also, your brain uses up like 75% of the cholesterol in the body. Like that's where, you know, most of it is. So we, we need a bunch of it. Um, so it's, you know, one of those big common myths. We can attack in another video and I have attacked in other videos before. So not enough fat, we need to make sure we have enough fat. Not eating enough, I think we cover this. Uh, we have to go past the point of being full to the point where we're not going to be tempted to have anything else. Uh, another thing that you might experience is something um, as you transition over is you're not going to have those carbs and that excess glucose now holding on and the, the fat cells and stuff in your body holding on to those electrolytes and things like that. Cause that's basically what's been going on before. Why you, know, you don't really you know, need electrolytes before you go into it as much, uh, or you don't think you do, but you kind of have it stored up from all the excess that you've been eating. Uh, so going into this, you might feel a dip in energy. So just take electrolytes, try to get some without any kind of sugar in them. Uh, take electrolytes to go ahead and keep that energy up. Uh, after not too long, you're not going to need those electrolytes anymore. Basically, at this point, um, I don't really use electrolytes. I didn't have to after like the first two months. I've just been salting my meat to taste from there. And then you decide how you want to jump in. You want to ease in or you want to go cold turkey. And I was going to say no pun intended, but I guess at this point, yeah, cold turkey, pun intended. Uh -huh. All right. So that said, whether you're, you, you are thinking about getting started on carnivore, or you already started and you want, you're looking for a little bit more information, you want to know what's going to help you the best, I hope this video did help you to some degree, you know, get that level of information that you want. Um, if you started and you failed carnivore, but you're like, you know, this is really, I know this is what I need to do, this is what I want to do, I have a better reason now. Just start again. You know, people ask, hey, do you need to, if, if I did really well for like a week and then I wind up eating like, a, I don't know, a piece of cake or something like that. All right. Don't beat yourself up too much. I mean, try to avoid the cake next time, but don't beat yourself up too much. Just go ahead. Next time you're hungry, just get back on that meat. So you eat more meat again and just try to eat enough that you're not going to be tempted again. I mean, think about it this way. Anything is better than what you've been struggling with so far, especially if you're considering carnivore. It's usually for a pretty good reason. Just dig a little bit deeper to find that nice deep reason why you want to do this. If you have any other questions, just definitely ask below, chat with each other. I try to answer what I can. Uh, I do have um, you know, uh, my business that I've run. I have a day job. I have other things going on right now. So I will try to absolutely... Uh, answer anything that I can. Try to help each other out in the comments if you can as well. Um, that said, ask anything you want. Comment below. Uh, tell me your story. You know, what has carnivore helped you with if you've been on carnivore for a while already, or if you started and you're already seeing positive results, go ahead and comment that below. Uh, just go ahead and give me a thumbs up, like, subscribe, uh, and all those sorts of things. And I definitely appreciate you for watching. Take care.